Life Unrehearsed, brought to you by Leanna's Senior Transition Support, helping you navigate home care and senior residences. And welcome back to Life Unrehearsed. Matt Del Vecchio here, specializing in elder care planning and the senior living industry. Thank you for tuning in. There's a little George Jones for you. You know, I lived in Moncton, New Brunswick in the early 90s. You know, I was uh, transferred from the big city of Montreal, went to Moncton. At the time, I think it was a population of 100,000 people. I didn't know anything about country music. And they looked at me like, what? And got introduced to George Jones, Alan Jackson, Garth Brooks, and all of them, and, and really just love the people of the Maritimes. Very grateful for them. All right. You know, there is a stigma about aging, and it tends to be thought of in a negative light. You see aging and, and not necessarily positive thoughts come into your mind. And we're also seeing more and more signs of ageism. I was approached by Beth Citrin late in the summer. You may remember Beth. She's been a guest on Life Unrehearsed. She's the owner of Beth Care, a Montreal-based boutique-style caregiving service. And she said, you know what, Matt? I have an idea for your show. How about talking about the positive aspects of aging and celebrating life? And as we talked it out, it became abundantly clear that she was absolutely right. We do think of aging in a negative light, but we can all play a role in changing the narrative. So here we are, Beth and I both deal with seniors and their adult children on a daily basis, and we hear a lot of things. So we figured it'd be nice to approach this topic from a layman's perspective and share some of our thoughts that we hope will probably resonate with many of our listeners. Beth, welcome back to Life Unrehearsed. Oh, Matt, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited for this one. At least it's a light topic. Yeah, no, you know what? And good on you. Thank you for, for reaching out. I often ask to, for ideas from our listeners, from colleagues and so on, and, and uh, you, exactly what you did, approached it. And it's a very timely topic, I think. Oh. So, you know, I'd love to have your perspective of why, you know, you even reached out and chose this topic for us. Okay, so I, I think what had happened was you and I had been through so much during COVID and um, we had many conversations of the challenges we were faced with. And as COVID was uh, lifting, we started to have a chat and um, we spoke about what we had gone through. And I think after our back and forth, we realized that we were older and definitely wiser. So after a few conversations, uh, I said to myself, am I going to fret? on the older part or am I going to embrace the wiser part? Mm -hmm. So um, I really, really thought about it and I said, you know, isn't it the aging that has taught us to focus on the wiser? Isn't it the aging that has helped us to shift into a level of appreciation rather than regret? So I'm calling Matt. Let's celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so glad you did reach out because we don't celebrate it enough. Uh, and and let's face it, media uh, has probably hasn't contributed greatly. Uh, so it's always it tends to be a, a difficult story, and and there is that negativity. So, you know, when we think of aging, we really shouldn't be in in a negative light, but uh, we should be celebrating it. So maybe, uh, Beth, can you provide some examples of how we can celebrate aging? For sure. Um, I, I remember uh, years ago, my husband and I had a, a very dear friend, and um, he had just lost his dad, and we got together and we were discussing, you know, how are you feeling with the loss of your dad? And, and he expressed his emotions and what he was feeling emotionally. But he ended the conversation with, I'm feeling that this is okay because this is the natural process of, of things. So I feel that this is okay. So I think that if, if we are finding ourselves growing older, then we have uh, definitely become the fortunate ones and that we're following the natural pro pro progression of life. So I think that's something to celebrate. Um, my dad would always say, well, it's definitely better than the alternative. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> that's, so that's a, a reason to celebrate too. Um, but I'm going to give you the biggest and best uh, reason to celebrate aging, and that's uh, recently I became a grandmother. Oh, congratulations. To, yeah, yeah, just a few months ago. And uh, I have to say, hands down, that is the best, the mm. best thing that's ever happened to my life and in my husband's life. And uh I would never have been given that opportunity if I didn't have the 
gift of aging. So I think I'll celebrate aging for now. (laughs) Such a great example and so true you you talk about. And you see the grandparents that are just absolutely gaga, but that's a perfect example of of celebrating aging. You're listening to Life Unrehearsed, Matt Del Vecchio here, and I'm talking with Beth Citrin about the lighter side of aging. Beth's the owner of Beth Care, a Montreal-based boutique-style caregiving service. You know, uh, Beth, no doubt aging comes with its challenges. However, if you truly reflect on the past, all phases of life come with challenges, don't they? Well, for sure. For sure, Matt. Let's, uh, let's, let's take a look back. So to start, my little granddaughter. So there's diaper rashes, there's cradle, ca- cradle cap, there's soon she's going to be learning to walk and toilet training. Those are definitely challenges in the infancy stage. stage. There's childhood, which brings us um, social problems like bullying, isolation, poor self-esteem. Those are challenges mm-hmm. in childhood. Then I would have to say the hardest phase, and maybe we all don't realize this when we're aging, but I'd say the hardest phase of uh, growing up is adolescence, mm-hmm. without a doubt. Um, our self-esteem is is shot. Uh, we have huge issues with body image, peer pressure, and of course, competition. So if we can get through adolescence, I'm sure we can get through uh, old age. Um, Then there's middle adulthood, which is an introduction to intimate relationships, friendships. That's when we separate from our parents. A lot of people have issues with that, that phase of their life. So if we are lucky to come into old age, to me, it is clear that it is just another phase with its own challenges. And actually, I think that growth and maturity helps us face the challenges of aging. It may even be the easiest phase for us to face because we have all the new skills that we've just learned growing into this old age. I mean, it's a very uh, valid and important point. You know, sometimes it's good to reflect on the past because aging can be difficult. You need to be courageous to age. But just like you said, you need to be courageous to be an adolescent in all the other phases of life. And perhaps it trains us a little bit more as we age. And, you, you know, I've often heard you use this quote from Betty Friedan. I'm going to quote. Uh, She says, Aging is not lost youth, but a new stage of opportunity and strength. It's so true, isn't it? Oh, I I really, really do love that quote. To me, um, to me, that quote shows that we always, always have a choice. We can choose to look at our glass half empty. We can choose to look at our glass half full. Um, I think that, you know, so far in this conversation, we've really established that every stage of life is bringing us different challenges. And at the same time, it's bringing us opportunities with a newfound strength because of the past challenges that we've just overcome. So this is growth and strength into the new territory that we need to face. I love that phrase and and because it is so appropriate. Um, Beth, we do have to head out to traffic, but when we come back, we're going to expand on this uh, lighter side of aging here on on Life Unrehearsed. We're going to celebrate aging because we, I think it's all our responsibility to change the narrative around a bit. And we're going to come up with some amusing stories uh, that you've got. I've got a couple myself and um, hopefully have a couple laughs instead of any sadness related to, at least during this segment, sure. Beth, okay? We're going to laugh. I'm going <laughs> to make right. you laugh, hopefully. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for tuning in to Life Unrehearsed. And welcome back. You're listening to Life Unrehearsed. I'm Matt Del Vecchio, and I'm talking with Beth Citrin about the lighter side of aging. You know, we both deal with seniors and older adults in our professional lives, and we see a lot of ageism, and there really is still a stigma with older adults, and we tend to think of aging in a negative light. Well, Beth approached me a little while ago and suggested we do a segment on Life Unrehearsed to celebrate aging. And how about changing their nar- narrative, which is uh, really appreciative, Beth, of, for you to bring that up and glad we're able to spend a little time with our listeners talking about this. It's an important conversation. So let's continue. Um, you know, I'm 57 and I was talking with some friends of mine recently. Uh, someone mentioned that it was 9 p.m. It was, oh, it's, it's past my bedtime, you know, 9 p.m. And it's just not used to it as as our younger years where 9 p.m. maybe the night was just beginning. And, and now as we age, sleep and many other ailments start to creep up. 
but it, that led to some pretty hilarious conversations amongst the, sure. my buddies. And, and uh, you must hear these stories all the time. Yes. Uh, you know what, Matt? We can really have a good time with this one. Uh, it's too bad we're on the radio. But anyways, uh, yeah, our bedtime definitely uh, does change. Our sleeping patterns change as well. There's several more visits to the bathroom. Uh, these are all, you know, good points to laugh at. And uh, we can look at our gray hair and our sagging skin, our aches, our pains, standing up, sitting down. And of course... We all look in the mirror and we see those lovely wrinkles, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to just share a very, very short story with you. I was sitting with a gentleman who's 102 years old, and his biggest handicap is his hearing. I was sitting across from him, and I said to him, um, I, I'm explaining something to him, and after two, three minutes, I noticed, oh, my God, is he? does he hear me? Does he hear me? And I said, can you hear me? Can you hear me? And he smiled, and he said, oh, my goodness, I can hear you so well. And I want you to know that if everybody spoke like you do, the hearing aid industry would be out of business. <laughs> and he had the biggest smile on his face. And I just said to myself, if he can find humor in his biggest handicap, I surely am going to find humor in my everyday aging process. So that was a great, great story, story for me. Yeah, love it. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I want to address this stigma that is still out there. And I'm, you know, I just wonder... Um, why there is that negative connotation. And I think a lot of it may be to the the fear of aging, the unknown. Do you think that's part of it? Okay, so that's definitely part of it. I truly believe um, that it's not about the fear. I think it's more about the unknown. I think and I personally feel that the unknown is definitely associated with the fear, mm -hmm. right? So if every stage of life brings us the unknown, right? Because that's what's happening. Maybe what we need to do is live in the moment, not fear what tomorrow brings. And if we can just live in the moment, then there's nothing to fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, if that makes sense yeah, absolutely you know it's it's and that's a very good point because knowledge is power after all you know and sometimes in our minds we're making things a lot worse than things Definitely. really are you know, listening to life unrehearsed matt del vecchio here and i'm talking with beth citrin about the later side of aging you know uh, beth this past october 1st was national seniors day uh, worldwide in fact i had some prominent guests on the show that day including the president and ceo of the group maurice i also had the president of the federation de l'Age d'Ordre Québec, as well as the national one of the national board of directors of the Canadian Association of Retired Persons, that are otherwise known as CARP. We discussed the prevalence of ageism throughout society and, and how we do have to change that narrative around. So in how would you define ageism, uh, Beth, and what can we all do collectively to fight ageism? Well, to answer your first question, what is ageism? It basically, in simple terms, it's age-based discrimination. So by directing your questions to an individual that is not the elder person, then you are showing discrimination to the elder person. I think we can fight ageism by fostering positive interaction with all people. Catch your own biases and, uh, you know, think through your, your thoughts and your actions. Yeah, very good point. And that, that could simply be by a conversation with your neighbor, your friend. It could be employers and employees and how you're dealing with um, older adults. And uh, I was talking with someone, and this was a while ago. I don't want to knock the financial industry, but the, one of their missions, it was a little branch. Uh, this was back in my Moncton days. And their priority was, okay, who is almost ready to retire? Maybe we can kind of push them out a little bit first, you know, and there's a good example of ageism. And I don't want to pick on the financial Perfect. industry. These are employers that they'll, it, it happens. I think it's happening less and less. In fact, some employers are really jumping on the bandwagon by um, combining older experienced employees with younger employees. And that's where the magic can really happen. So I think all of us, uh, it's not others that can correct ageism. All of us have to be responsible and accountable uh, for, sure. for helping with ageism. Now, I like uh, quickly now, just about the mysteries of life. And we, we talked a little bit about it uh, beforehand, but only aging and living can help us contemplate the mysteries of life. So with life experiences, 
that will help our aging process, won't it? Okay, Matt, you said this was supposed to be a light conversation, <laughs> but this isn't going to be light for me, <laughs> if anybody knows me. Um, honestly, I sometimes wonder why we waste our time speaking of anything else. Really, it's truly an interesting topic, uh, the mysteries of life. I think we should do a whole show on that one. Um, where do we come from? How did we get here? What brought us into this world? What is our relationship to reality as a whole? I mean, really, look at the beauty, the diversity of this world, and of course, how complex it is, especially now, right? Um, in my humble opinion, life is truly a mystery. When we're young, we just move in motion. We don't stop. We don't think. Um, do we ever pause just to breathe? With age, we tend to stop, to reflect. We experience intense waves of gratitude that we never did when we were younger. We just seem to value life so much more. Um, I'm going to assume this is called wisdom. We obviously need to age and and grow to become wise, to actually realize life is a mystery. A mystery indeed. You know, while I have you here, here, Beth, we're running out of time very quickly, but you are so engaged in the market for home care. This is your life uh, operating Beth Care, uh, you know, nice boutique style caregiving service. Uh, real quickly, lay of the land concerning home care these days in, in Montreal. You know what? I, I can't speak for others. I, uh, I can only speak for Beth Care. Uh, recently, we've been very focused on our own client care needs. Everything still seems to be resettling following the pandemic. Uh, what we really, really have noticed is that people are less inclined to leave their elderly loved ones alone, whether it be in a hospital setting or a senior care facility. There's like this sudden need for more supervision and companionship. We really think there's a general feeling that quality of life is so important and one-on-one -on -one care contributes to that. We really try to encourage people to reach out for home care before things get too difficult. The state of, um, the state of our home care system and the post-pandemic world has a very, very big impact on all quality care. I think very well said, uh, Beth, and, and I think since the pandemic, it, we have seen more and more aging at home. We just need better quality. We need our healthcare system to improve. But, uh, you know, good on you and your whole team just providing some wonderful services uh, at home. All right. Thank you very much, Beth, for coming into the studio here on a Sunday. Uh, how can our listeners find out a little bit more about Beth Care? First of all, Matt, thank you. Thank you for this honor. It's been a real pleasure. Um, our name is Beth Care senior services our website is b-e-t-h-c-a-r-e.com bethcare.com and our phone number is 514-487-9496 wonderful thank you beth that's beth citron owner of beth care uh, montreal-based boutique style caregiving service and Good on you, Beth, for, for really taking this to a whole, you know, wearing a different hat, getting it out of your comfort zone, did a fantastic job, and looking at the lighter side of aging. Well, thank you, everyone, for tuning in to Life Unrehearsed. As a reminder, for all your inquiries or assistance with life transitions, elder care planning, and the senior living industry, it'd be my pleasure to help. You can find out more if you look up Lianas Senior Transition Support. That's Lianas, L I. A-N-A-S, Senior Transition Support. Many thanks to our technical producer, Dario and Emily today. Thank you both. You can listen to Life on Unrehearsed here on CJD 800 every Sunday at 4.30.